So we're going to start up again with Larry Lewis. He graduated from Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire with the BS in engineering. Lewis has 40 years of engineering and implementing creative solutions for operation challenges for businesses of all sizes. He has 30 years of experience as a principal with small and medium sized businesses, including a family owned business. He is experienced in client service and sales, sales training, and sales management for various products and services. Lewis has substantial experience with the project management of technical product installations, inspections, and servicing. Substantial experience with manufacturing operations, including de novo, line setups, and startups. Lewis is a consultant service to Yates Dale Aride, Lake County, Michigan Transit Company, providing strategic plans and service for upgrades to communications systems, including designing and implementing of TOD new communication tower. Mr. Lewis was the president of Lewis Brothers Service from 1989 to 2015, whereas president of a close, closely held company working with family members expand from a local auto repair and auto towing to establish a trucking company service, major corporations in just-in-time uh, inventory operations. Lewis' primary responsibility was client organization, including pricing and all contract negotiations. Additionally, supervising all accounting and financial functions, including audit section selections and banking relations. Lewis increased net worth 18 times and put in place a long-term growth plan to secure the future. So let's give Larry Lewis a warm welcome. Okay. It's a pleasure to be here. I haven't been home for three years two months, three days, and I've missed being in Arkansas. And then when I talked to Quindici, uh, he's part of my family. We worked together for so long, he's my other brother. And then when the doctor says that he loved okra, well, Quindici sent me okra. So last year I grew your seeds in, in, in where I live now. But we're, we're here to talk about here. Where's the uh, clicker to advance the slide? The mouse. The mouse. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're here to talk about my father, Angelo Charles Lewis. Angelo's not a name you don't, you don't see very often for people of color. But my grandfather was a World War I veteran. So after World War I, Angelo was born, Cicero was born, Lorena was born. So we're going to talk about being in business. And that's my dad at his brand new station about 1962, right next to Shorter College in North Little Rock, black institution. Originally, it was called Bethel University in Little Rock, but they, when they moved, they changed it to Shorter College. Okay. When you look at this, we're talking about moving from the farm 
to business. I'm going to talk four things today. One is the first quarter, 1919 to high school. Second quarter, U.S. Army to AM and N. Third quarter is his apprenticeship to 1957. You know what happened in 57. And then the fourth quarter of the life of an entrepreneur, my dad, A.C. Lewis, was 1958 to 1989. Well, my dad was born in 1919. That was a year of the, the year 1919 was called the Red Summer. Red Summer of 1919. My grandfather Theodore Lewis and his wife Emma lived in Scott, Arkansas, just, just uh, on the other side of the river, on the low note, Plassey County line. While my grandfather was at war in Europe, in the First World War, my grandmother built the house. So when he came back from war, he had, she had built the house. And Doc, we grew okra, <laughs> and watermelon, and cotton, and sorghum, and peanuts. To remind you what happened in 1919, that was part of the great migration of black people in America. And that, if you look at the map, this is 1919. This is the great red summer of black people bleeding across America. My dad was born that year. He was born in adversity. Adversity is something that we as people of color have always seen, but 1919 gave us lynchings throughout America, riots throughout America. And there's one there, that little green spot in Arkansas is called the Elaine Riot. 221 black people were killed, six white people were killed, 13 black people were convicted of murder. And guess who their attorney was? Scipio Africanus Jones. As we look forward, Born in adversity, and the, the map is full of death, destruction, and bloodshed, 1919. So my, my grandfather, T.T., his son was called Junior. And then there was my dad and his wife, Frances, and then my uncle Cicero <laughs> and his wife. And then there was my Carrie and my Uncle Harold. Well, Uncle Harold was also in the military. Angelo was in the military. Theodore was in the military. Then my, my Aunt Delcina, my Aunt Lorena, and my Uncle William. In a family business, they owned a the farm. They grew cotton. And if you look, you can see the Arkansas River right there. And right in here was where my grandfather was. This land here was owned by his sister. All until those 640 acres were owned by the family in that time. And so they raised cotton and I remember picking purple hull peas and okra. And my dad would get up in the morning, we'd go pick okra and then take it to the wholesale house on Pike Avenue in North Little Rock and sell it every morning. We started at four o'clock and at seven o'clock they'd be delivering it to the warehouse. Well, finished high school, Nelson School down in, in Scott, Arkansas. My, my dad and his brother went to Europe they left that farm, went to serve the country, and their mother died right here in Little Rock at the Baptist Hospital. That was a black hospital, but she was so sick, she had to go to the white hospital, Baptist. And she was in the basement, because you, if you're a black person, they would let you go upstairs. They kept a basement room just for people of color. My mother says she came to see her mother-in-law, and she was on the floor. She'd fallen out, and my mother says, well, you know, that's what she had to do. My uh, Grandmother died, and they wouldn't let my dad or his brother come home for the funeral. 
Well, when they came back, Cicero says, I can't take it. So he left and went to Kansas City and Detroit and was in the building trades. And my, my dad went down to AM and and Pine Bluff and got a little certificate as a mechanic. Now, during World War II, he was part of the Red Ball Express, that all black unit that maintained the trucks that drove Eisenhower to, to Berlin and kept the troops moving ahead. And I remember sitting and talking to my dad, and he says, you know, he came back from the war, and he got on the train in St. Louis, and come into Little Rock, and he got to Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and the train stopped, and all the black troops had to move to the back of the train. Well, he got back, and he started working around in, in Scott, and he, wife, and got two or three kids, and, Three kids by then, and he and his army buddy, Johnson, said, we need to make some money. They finished the certificate down at AM and N, and they opened a little gas station right here in Little Rock at 14th and High. Dad's a mechanic, the other guys running the gas station, they, they're doing okay. He's got, he's an entrepreneur now. He's got his, he's got his degree and certificate in repair, and he's working over in Little Rock here, and uh, right down the street. And he said, well, it's okay, but he had to do something a little bit better. So the next year, he opened up his own gas station, went solo, a company called Redbird. Redbird was a brand of gasoline out of uh, Indiana, owned by Monsanto. So AC got his first gas station over in North Little Rock. And that, that lasted a couple of years. 1949, the year I was born, <laughs> uh, Standard Oil came to him, the Red Bird said, well, we, we, need, need to, we need a black dealer here. So he moved up. And that gas station there is on the corner of 9th and, and, and Locust. That, that's US uh, 67. That's the road to St. Louis. It's at the Viadoc, and I remember being there, and there was a the Southern Compress where they made big bales of cotton, and we'd sit there and, and uh, try to repair cars and fix flats. And that's what we did for a number of years. And all of a sudden, he started to grow. So these are the SO years, okay? Right on the road from Scipio A. Jones High School. And during this time, my Aunt Lorraine finished at AM and N, and she's going to get a master's degree up, up the road there in Kentucky. And they see Palace all in the car. We headed up the highway. And he said, he always want to stop at the gas station, always went to Exxon or Esso at that time. And we went to a gas station. He filled up his car, gave the man the credit card. And the man says, I, he said, well, we got to use the restroom. The man pointed out to the woods. Says, That's where you go if you color. And he says, no, it don't work that way. I'm a dealer. And he said, put my car on the rack. You take your gas out and give me my money back. I'm going on the road. As an entrepreneur, my dad understood that money talks. He says, if you're going to take my money, you've got to provide me with a service. He says, if I can't have the service, then you can't have my money. So get, you, you take your gas back, and he put the car on the rack, drained the gas out, and we went down the road and bought gas somewhere else. As an entrepreneur, my dad always looked at being excellent at what he did. Exxon, or Esso at that time, Standard Oil of New Jersey, so had a policy, and you, if you were, everybody was welcome at the Esso gas station for restaurants. And he says, this is what I expect, this is what I want to do. Working with my dad, he says, you know, he would not allow us to not understand that it's important that we do an excellent job. It's got to be a good job. 
It's got to be the right job. As an entrepreneur, you are providing a service to the motoring public. Every hour on the hour, we wouldn't check the bathroom and mop them up. It, Wayne, am I lying? <laughs> so we learn early, excellence is what you do if you're an entrepreneur. You don't just get by. You do a good job. You do a good job. During the SO years, and we heard from uh, Dr. Mitchell, things start to happen. 30 was the way you went to, Interstate 30 was coming to Little Rock. And they put it right down the business district. Uh, so we were in the way. So the gas station you just saw had to be torn down. Right there in the black neighborhood, the black church across the street, the high school, that's what they expressed. We went right down the middle of where black people lived and where they worked and where they had businesses. This was the year that the world changed in 1957. My uncle was teaching at the University of, of uh, Kampala in Uganda. And he says, he heard about Little Rock and he called. And back in 57, to make a long disc call over the world, he had to call somebody. He says, would you call us? And they made a connection. But he heard about what happened in Little Rock. We are looking at the change of the world in 1957. That's why we broke it up. Things happened and that changed the nature of what we could do as a black entrepreneur. My dad at that point had, had three, three different enterprises and I saw the change in 57 in how we had to do business. In North Little Rock, the majority of his customers were white. They had the money, they bought the gas, they had the businesses. We were servicing Missouri Pacific. We were servicing a lot of businesses in North Little Rock because we were standard of New Jersey. We were accepting credit cards, we were growing. And now they're gonna tear our station down. For three months we had nowhere to go. I mean, they tore it down before they built the new one. And so all of a sudden, things changed. During that upheaval, a group of black businessmen got together to decide what are we going to do because some black folk that work for white folk got fired and the kids will try to go to different schools. So part of what happened in 57, 58, black people came together in Little Rock because they had always come together. I can remember that there were times when Exxon or Esso required that my dad pay in cash for his gas. And he'd go to Ruffin and Jared, the funeral home, and he'd borrow money. He would get with uh, Smith Brothers Construction and have to borrow money to buy gas on Thursday and return on Monday or Tuesday. But I was able to sit and watch my dad and those people in the community get together in 1957 and create a new way of doing business. And it, it, it was very good, and my dad learned how money works, because he's just been working and working and working, supporting his seven and eight kids. And so being an entrepreneur meant you had to learn how to count your money and create new enterprises. There was a group called Plaza Realty and Insurance Company that was founded in those years from 57, a little bit later than that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But that creation of that company also provided a vehicle for AC, or my dad, Angelo, to learn how to grow. And that growth, I call it the plaza years. There was a group of black businessmen that got together and they created a food market in Glenview, which is an all black area just past Dark Hall in North Little Rock. Uh, Jesse Powell, anybody know Jesse Powell? He, the name is ringing any bells? He had a grocery store right down the street from Dr. Routon. So 
these people got together with the resources that they had, created a corporation that put a grocery store in North Little Rock where there was none, that put a gas station in Little Rock where there was none, start hiring people on their own by collectively doing that process. By that time, Fifth and Locust was new, and that's the one you saw on the front, and so we were able to move back into the gasoline business, Fifth and Locust, right next to uh, Shorter College. And because he learned a little bit after 57, he kept better books. He did better work. It was pivotal in order for him to grow. He built a fin good financial record that allowed him to acquire more property and to get a line of credit. That's my dad and my mom, A.C. and Francis Lewis. Now they were able, because they had learned something on how to truly be an entrepreneur from the plaza years, they were able to educate all eight of their children and supply work and employment to hundreds of people throughout this community. They employed students from Philander Smith, Arkansas Baptist College, from uh, Shorter College, and other institutions in the area. In the 1970s, he was able to start in buying investment properties. He was always looking, because I remember when we were kids, he'd put us in the car, we'd drive around. He said, I, I like that. And we were in Smoky Hollow. And all of a sudden, that became Walmart in North Little Rock. And we looked at land up on 120, on, on uh, north of North Little Rock, and that became Sherwood. And so he was looking ahead. So an entrepreneur is someone who's always looking, how do you improve, how do you get better, in search of excellence. That's what is required to be in business by yourself. It's not just what you do, you got to do it well. And you got to look ahead. You got to see what, what's going, coming ahead. That movement in 57 of creating the Plaza Enterprises was pivotal because it gave him access to the information that allowed him to grow in the 70s. It allowed him to go, and uh, Dr. Mitchell says that in Park Hill there were no uh, sidewalks. Well, my dad was able to buy a house in Park Hill before he died. He couldn't have done that in the 50s because it was a restricted community. But we were able to do so many more things because of Plaza Enterprises being able to get the, so a group of black people together, collect some money, get a corporate structure, and then provide ways of doing that. That third quarter, so when Interstate 30 was built, the new station was built on his land, okay? Because before, Exxon owned that property. So when he moved to Fifth and Locust, he owned the land. Now, Exxon owned the building, but he owned the land. Well, they decided it was time to get rid of that one. So how do you grow? And that's what we're really talking about. As an entrepreneur, you've got to always be growing. He was part of the founding of that Lion Oil Station, 14th and Izzard, across from Philander Smith part of the Glenview Food Market in North Little Rock, part of an insurance company in Mothers. He was also selling Neutralite, which is a uh, supplement before Amway bought it. And he became an Amway distributor. Then he created a, a, a janitorial supply company. So when they were tearing down his gas station at 9th and uh, Locust, he went next door on the other side of the street and put together a a, uh, a chemical company, and he would drive to St. Louis and buy his, his waxes and put his name on it. He was selling it to Michigan Bell, uh, what we call it, Art, is it Ameritech here? The Bell companies. He was, they were one of his clients. He sold it to churches and schools. He's always looking for opportunities. There was a company called Spitzer Dodge. I mean, remember Spitzer Dodge. <laughs> he was a salesman. He'd drive the car around, and people said, where'd you get that? Like, I, he wrote him up. I mean, he sold the car we were driving. <laughs> <laughs> he always looking for an opportunity to do 
better in search of excellence. 1964, he bought his first tow truck. And so it was a Dodge, he got it from Spencer Dodge. <laughs> and he got it outfitted with a, a, and so he was towing cars. And I remember in 64, you know, we were sitting there and we worked with, and he ended up getting the North Rock franchise to tow cars. First colored person ever to do that. And he got, he had a friend over at the uh, VA hospital, so we got GSA approval. Then he, because he had a good record, then he was able to go out and uh, he got the state police. He was the first black tour for the state police anywhere in the state. And he started touring for DEA in Pulaski County and they finally got a dollar rental car and the Enterprise in the They just kept going and kept going. By that time, that his original location on 5th and Locust they decided to decommission it. So they moved into a <coughs> site where he had to rent. He didn't own the land or the building on the corner of Broadway at um, I-30, Interstate 30. Well, but he kept going. He was a member of the NAACP lifetime. He was an active member of the colored VFW. <laughs> And there was a, a distinction in the 50s and 60s. They had a colored VFW and a white VFW. He, my, wife, my mother was a member of the auxiliary. He stayed a member of his home church in Scott, Arkansas to the day he died. Now let's go back to his father, which is Theodore. He was a member there. And we'll go back to his father. He was a member there. You go back to his father. He was a member there. So entrepreneurs tend to build relationships that are lifelong and consistent. And because he did that, he had a group of people that knew him, and he knew people. And so he was able to parlay that always. Church met on first and third Sundays. So he'd always get up and drive all the way back down to Scott for church. All right? He served as a delegate. He always traveled. We're working six days a week. He's going to work at six o'clock in the morning, get off at six o'clock at night. But every year in August, he'd go to the National Baptist Convention. Wherever it was in America, he and John Smith from Smith Brothers Construction, Matthew Smith, who was a pastor, get up and go. And they did that in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They traveled with that green book all around the world. He had a vision, and he always looking forward. He was trying to buy property here, looking for it. Then back in the 50s when Cummins was a prison here, he'd hire ex-cons. They had a program, and so he, he always made sure he gave opportunities to people. People that people didn't look for, he says, well, come on in, I'll give you something to do. And he did that consistently in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. 2000s, we still stood in the same thing. We did this. Now, I got a map to Quindici. <laughs> now, if you remember, uh, Doc was talking about that zone in Little Rock where Poverty, it starts right here at, this is Interstate 30, and that area is all this area back in here. Scipio A. Jones is right here, okay? So the, the gas station is now called S.A. Jones Drive. This is where the first gas station was. The second gas station is at Ninth and Locust. But his first was on Broadway, New Walnut. Okay, so he started back in 1948, 1947. Then he went up here in that whole black zone and the, the AME church is here and the Baptist church is here. And, you know, these are all black areas in here. So as Interstate 30 came in, we had to move down to 5th and Locust. And this is Shorter College right here. 
Well, then they deemed that to be not productive, did sell enough gas, so they made us move down here next to the Simmons Arena. It was called the uh, Altel Arena, Wayne? It's called the Altel Arena. So we're right here on the expressway, right there, at Broadway and Interstate 30. And at that time, it was a Kroger's and a Kmart. Well, Jackson Cook was down on, down on uh, Washington Avenue. So we could smell Jackson Cookie. <laughs> but at that time, we were there. We stayed there for a number of years, all right? And then we ended up here at back on 9th Street. That's where we are right now, 123 S.A. Jones. That's our present location. And then we had an interim spot right here at Cypress, which is uh, the U-Haul. But in Little Rock, <laughs> uh, we, he started out in 1946, 1947 at 14th and High. And then the, this is Flanders Smith College. So we're right there, it's called, uh, used to be called 14th Street, now it's, uh, Daisy Gaston Bates Drive on the corner of Izzard. 14th is now a barber shop, I believe. The building's still there. And then right across the street on the corner of 14th and Chester, we ran that golf station for a number of years. And then, now again, this is the old Baptist Hospital right here. And so we were right there on the corner of 12th and Battery. <laughs> The same way across the street, we were there for 10 years. So all of a sudden, this, this farm boy from Scott, Arkansas, that left in you know, 1942 going to Europe, came back with three kids and no money, opened a gas station at 14th and High. And at that, when we had one, two, three, four, five locations operating, at the same time, plus uh, a janitorial business. And one of the things that you learn as being an entrepreneur, you can't keep all the money. One of the failures of being an entrepreneur is trying to keep all the money. In 1978, these group of beautiful girls went to the national championship after winning the Arkansas championship wearing the jerseys at A.C. Lewis Exxon. They changed the name. You know, it used to be called Standard Oil. They broke it up and then it became, you know, Chevron and Gulf Oil. But these girls won the state championship of Arkansas for softball. And they went to the national in Idaho. Idaho, Wayne? Idaho. Yeah, went to Idaho for the national that year. They were part, I think for 12 years, we sponsored a team at the Boys and Girls Club in North Little Rock. We worked with the YMCA, the A.W. Young YMCA in North Little Rock. He's always going and providing. We buy souvenir books at churches and things all over the city. My dad was always giving back. That was a highlight, you know. This is 1972, and again we're back on Locust, and that's Paul Woods and uh, my brother Charles is also working at that point. But we were Garage of the Month for the AAA of Arkansas. Well, my dad died in 1989. He was 69 years old. And we, you know, but my mother sitting right there between, I think that's my younger brother Ken and my younger brother Wayne. Wayne's sitting over here. Then it's my mother and the 
I can't tell you who, who the employee, I was in, New, I was in uh, Mi Michigan then, but we ran three trucks now. I think we're running, what, six or seven trucks now? Six trucks now. We're still in business. We're still here. We're still growing. And the Arkansas Minority Enterprise Bank with 1986, there's my dad. And I couldn't show all that, so it says A.C. Lewis Automotive Service, because he had been doing business as a sole proprietor for a number of years. Oh, well, I guess about 19... 73 formed a corporation for those tax reasons. During the intervening 36 years, it's grown from a three pump operation with no service bay, which we saw on 9th Street, to $1 million a year with three service bays, 10 pumps, four records, and all the equipment needed. It's called 1978 as a family business. And after 36 years in the Twin City area, he had retail and commercial customers, including Twin City Bank, Arkansas Supply Company, Pearson Bates. Remember Spitzer? Pearson Bates bought him out, and they became Little Rock Dodge. <laughs> Firestone uh, Golf was at Firestone across the street, and, and they're all with people that we worked with. We still do. We still told for Firestone Chester Street. Still told for Firestone. On JFK. We still tow for the state of Arkansas, Arkansas State Police. We still have a contract for towing for North Little Rock. Um, we still get awards. We still get the we got 4.5 stars on our Google uh, page. We're still here. Now this is my dad's family. Uh, I got the. Almost same time. <laughs> hold, hold the hand, my brother Wayne. He's he's general manager of the company. And then uh, there's my older sister, my mother, and my other sister. They're the two success stories. The two on the right. She's a doctor. He's a judge. And so of those eight people, uh, you know, seven of them still there with us. My mom died uh, several years ago, but we're still there. And we're, st we're still here as Lewis Automotive Service has been replaced by Lewis Towing, my brother there. We still chose tow for the post office, GSA, Arkansas State Police, North Little Rock. We have a used car company. We have a trucking company. Then we have another trucking company. We have a construction company. And we have a holding company. We're still here. But this is what it's all about. It says that these are things I learned from my mom and dad, how to be an entrepreneur. Always count your money. <laughs> Always count your money. That's it. The first thing my dad showed me is how to count money. And if things get in your way, move them. The job goes better if you get stuff out of your way. Keep your area clean. I mean, we, we would mop every hour on the hour, whether it needed it or not. <laughs> Trust your staff, but check on them every once in a while. <laughs> I remember my dad would, uh, before, when they, Arkansas used to be a blue, blue, uh, a blue uh, law state, you know, they were closed on Sundays. He always took Sundays off. And we'd get in the car and go see family in St. Louis. And I'll tell you another story. There was a time if you were black, you couldn't try clothes on at the store. My dad got up and says, if I can't try the hat on, I'm going to go somewhere else. And we'd get up on Sunday morning and drive to St. Louis, go to the famous bar, and we'd shop. We'd go by and see my, my, my Uncle William in St. Louis, have dinner, and drive back. Because here on Main Street, he couldn't try the hat on or the shoe on. He said, you can't, I ain't buying nothing from you. And we'd get in the car, and he'd drive to St. Louis, and we would shop in St. Louis every year. He understood excellence. And he says, if, you, if, you, if you're going to take my money, I want the service. 
If I can't get the service, you can't have my money. And he ran his business the same way. I'm going to give you a service. Just bring me your money. <laughs> he spent time with his family, with God and his church. And don't try to keep all the money. <laughs> and take time to go and see. My grandmother had not seen her son in Utah. So my dad got a couple of, I didn't go, I, stayed, I had to work. <laughs> and went to Utah to see her son. He was always trying to see what was new, what was out there. And the other thing of being an entrepreneur is you always have to build a network. You can't do it by yourself. Build a team to advise and to give advice, to lend and to borrow, to travel and to trust. These are things I learned from an entrepreneur that went from the farm to business, to multiple businesses. And uh, that is my presentation. Any questions? That's wonderful.